Hey everybody, happy Friday. It's a Friday afternoon. We know what that means. It's payday. And it's time to get out and back giant size two-fisted manly tails. See what I did there? Um, I wanted to pop in this afternoon. Um, I know a lot of you guys are, are at work uh, and, and busy doing things. Um, but I was really excited. Uh, uh, between last night and today, um, I got a bunch of artwork in uh, for the stories. Uh, for two fisted manly tails, and it looks <laughs> amazing. And uh, I, I just couldn't wait to to get on and, and share some of this uh, live. Um, I'll send out uh, images uh, uh, via my email list and um, uh, and and the update through the campaign too. But um, you know, I'm sure some people haven't uh, backed this thing yet, and. Uh, you know, I'm hoping that uh, seeing some of this new art will uh, will uh, get you motivated to do so. Um, we got a couple new team members, um, and they're already ahead of the game. Uh, they're 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 kicking butt. Um, Dan Lawless uh, sent me a page that he not only penciled and inked, um, but that he colored as well, and he has a, a really really incredible palette. Um, it looks like paintings, you know, uh, when you guys see the, the, this page, you're going to freak out. Uh, I got, uh, uh, three or four pages, uh, from Michael Golden today. Um, some of these things haven't been colored yet. Um, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm going to just share the black and whites here. And then when the color comes in, you know, uh, I'll, I'll get to it, um, and, and, and post it, but, um, let's see who's here so far. And give it a little bit of time, get some people to drop into the room here. Uh, past, past Master Dan is here. He says he, he can feel his T level going up just waiting. <laughs> then he rags on me, says, uh oh, Graham's late. This has never happened before. What will we do? Okay, I was one minute late. You know, it's just gathering up all my crap. Uh, Stat Zero is here. Hey, buddy, I see that you got your Alien Alamo today. That's awesome. Thank you so much for backing that. All you guys, I, I know almost all you guys back that thing. So thank you. Uh, Hyper Kaiju is here. He says, howdy. Uh, Past Master Dan also says, punch a werewolf today. If you have that opportunity, yes, please do so. Hyper Kaiju says he better pour, he, he guessed he, he, that he better pour a Jameson. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, here's something else I forgot to do. Turn my lights on. Uh, there we go. Uh, the beam pad is here. He says, hail Nolan, hail chat. Dr. Masks, retro elixir. You know, you can't say that one too fast. It's one of those tongue tie things. Uh, but Dr. Masks is always in these chats and uh, he's always a welcome addition. Uh, he says, hail Graham, hail chat. JP Roca asks uh, his eternal question, what's good? Uh, some of the artwork that I'm going to show you, uh, all the artwork I'm going to show you today is all good. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Ah, Man of War 665, Neighbor of the Beast says, Hail Amigos. Uh, he's given the, this sign and the bourbon sign. I'm definitely going to have one. David Williams uh, says he's here to see the golden art. Um, I sent you a link to come into the room here, buddy boy, uh, so that uh, we can also show your art. So uh, get out of the chat room and get in here. Uh, we also got another guest here. Let me bring him in, Mr. Mike Barron. Hey, Graham. How are you doing today, Mike? Good. Excellent, excellent. Are you here to see some of this really cool artwork? Excellent. Okay. Uh, the bean pad is here. What about the bean pole? The bean pole? Well, we'll have to keep scrolling and see if the bean pole made it. Uh, Marcus Killebrew is here. He says this will be cool. <laughs> David says, I'm naked. Well, that's never stopped you before. So, um, you know, you can still get in here and, and play with the big boys. All right. Uh, Michael Deach, I hope I pronounced that right. 
if my German is correct, Deitch. Uh, the adults are in the room. <laughs> Dr. Mass says, hail Mike Barron. All right. Hail Dr. Mask. Okay. So why don't we uh, take a peek at the first one here? Uh, oh, wait, I got to. Let me share the screen here. Hold on a sec. Share screen. No. Where is it? Uh, hmm. Hold on a sec, fellas. That's what's wrong here. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. First one up is uh, the legendary Larry Stroman, uh, who is working on a Chuck Dixon story called Scab. It's a, a it's it's a real down and dirty sci-fi horror tale, and these two guys really deliver. Um, I love the fact that um, Kelsey Shannon covered uh, colored this story. And I've been a huge fan of Kelsey's for years. Um, his, uh, his, his palette, his, um, uh, and, and his artwork as well, too, because he's going to be illustrating uh, um, actually a sci-fi story for me uh, in a little bit as well. Um, what do you think of this page, Mike? Looks good. You know, I was talking to Larry this week. Mm -hmm. well, maybe us doing something together. Now, Larry, if you're watching, I'm thinking about it. Oh, good. Excellent. Uh, Larry's one of those guys that, you know, um, when he was working at Marvel back in, I guess it was the early mid nineties, uh, doing uh, alien Legion and, uh, X factor. He, he, you know, took the world by storm with a new style that we hadn't seen before, you know, um, which is really cool. Uh, just, I just love his work. Me too. All right. Uh, and he's a great guy too. I had him on the show a few weeks ago. Yeah, we had a good time together. Uh, let me just check out some of these. See if we've got questions here. Okay. All right. So let's take a peek at uh, our next one. And this is by the shy uh, David uh, Brohawk Williams, who uh, refuses to come into the stream today, but that does not negate any of his talent. We could send him some clothes. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta get rid of this one here. I'll stop that one. Okay, there's a problem. Uh, da, 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 da. Share screen window. There we go. That's what I need. Okay. Uh, this is from uh, the Chuck Dixon story, Volsung. It's a, a Viking tale. Uh, this is this this story here is going to be colored by uh, Gabe Eltieb, uh, and the two of those guys work together on uh, Bass Reeves, which, as you all know, is one of my favorite comics uh, over the last year. Great stuff. Uh, Kevin Grievous wrote a touching and exciting script for that. Um, and Kevin is in our project too. Um, Giant Size Two Fisted Manly Tales. So, um, so there's that. Uh, what do you think of this one, Mike? It's all great. Uh, you've, you've never had a bad artist in any of these books. I know. I know. I, I, I'm truly blessed uh, that when I asked um, these guys, uh, they all said yes, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, and, and I'm very thankful for it. Um, I think, you know, a lot of them want to do these kind of comics, you know, which you don't really have a, a lot of opportunities for. Uh, the freedom and and to work with guys like Mike Barron and Chuck Dixon and and um, and Bo Smith, you know, as as writers, uh, you know, I think a lot of the artists are, are looking to work with really good writers, and and we got some great ones here. I love the gray tones on this. This is a uh, inked by Gary Martin too, as as a matter of fact. I don't, don't want to leave him out. Old pale. Okay. All right. So that is 
um, David Williams. See, I'm only showing the one one page from each story right now because they're only 10 pages each. And I don't want to reveal too much. I mean, I might show a second page as we go on a little bit, but I don't want to, you know, reveal anything. So, Dan, and, Dan is in the chat room. Who is? Dan Lawless. Oh, and so is Gabe, who I just mentioned. He says he'll be coloring that story. Yes, Gabe, um, I need to get you uh, this file um, that was sent to me today. Uh, so you can get going on this one page here so I can get that up on the campaign. Um, will it all be in color? Yes, uh, every one of them, every one of the stories will be in color. It's not the Chinoo, you know. <laughs> um, okay. Dr. Mass says that one looks great. Black and white. It does look great black and white. But uh, when Gabe works his magic, it, it'll, it'll look even cooler. Okay. Next up is, I believe, Dan Lawless. It is. This is Mike's story. Uh, you want to tell them a little bit about the story here, Mike? Oh, it's about rooftop Koreans. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mike just, tried to push that one on me. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's about uh, it's about a band uh, playing at a Rhodes house uh, in a rural area, uh, and there's not much of a crowd. And then uh, some uh, four frat boys show up snorting coke and. Uh, they uh, behave badly, very badly towards the waitress. And at that point, the band leader uh, realizes he has to take action or the whole, the whole evening is going to go to shit. So he does take action. Uh, and there's uh, a very interesting brawl in the bar. And the aftermath of the brawl is even more interesting. Did Dan color this? Yes. Wow. Yeah, he did the whole thing. Uh, what's really cool, too... Um, the image is kind of small, so I don't know if you can really see it on the screen here, and I can't blow it up. Uh, but uh, on this, in this first panel, on this pickup truck, is all uh, Comics Gate logos, like uh, their bumper stickers on there. So, like the Shinu is on there, and Cyber Frog, and there's a couple others. And he tossed out the other day. Uh, I guess it was last night. Uh, on um, it was either Shane's or or, or, or the uh, professional stream. I forget. I was on two of them last night. That uh, if any uh, of the uh, Comics Gate um, creators wanted to get their logo on the truck, he would put it on and, and just kind of, you know, make this, you know, this beat up pickup truck with all the bumper stickers, you know. So uh, so if you're listening, folks, uh, you know, contact Dan about that. But I, I just love this. His palette is amazing. But then Dude, there's man. a softness to the colors, too. Dan, send me that page. Yeah, Dan is in here, I think. Yeah, I see him. I'm oh, there he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you guess what's going to happen to that Les Paul Gibson guitar? No, 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 no. <laughs> He's speculating. <laughs> it's, it's you know, this is not a far stretch, but, you know. I met Les Paul. Did you? Yeah, and he had a grip like a stevedore. No kidding. Oh, yeah. It's like Joe Kubert. Yeah. You know, you shake hands with Joe and you, you got to soak your hand in ice water for a little bit. Yep. You know? yep. Um, okay, Dan, we'll do. What did he say? Uh, can't find anything wrong with this page. Nice. Yeah, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this. I love this girl here. This uh, She's sort of um, Barbara Eden looking. Uh, yeah. Uh, Somebody in the in in the chat said Barbara Eden, but you know I see Gwen Stacy, you know, uh, but either either one is great. Oh well, look who showed up, the naked man himself. <laughs> man, you don't seem to understand how long it takes to dry off these balls. <laughs> <laughs> And they weren't even that big until you started working on giant size two fisted manly tails. That's right. My stuff <laughs> swole up once I heard the, the people you had working on it. I was just like, oh, shoot. I got to bring it. <laughs> He's got to bring it. <laughs> I was going, and my you did, brother. You did. That, uh, that page that you sent is awesome. 
I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you like it. How's it going, yeah. Big Mike? Going good, Dave. Yeah, fun stuff. I'm busy Howdy with a chick on the hound. What'd you say, Mike? What was that? I'm, I'm busier than a tick on a hound. <laughs> oh, I'm busier than oh. a dick, tick on a hound. All right. I had a little malaprop there. I said dick on a hound. <laughs> <laughs> depends, depends on the hound. I guess so. In what state you live in? <laughs> Colorado. <laughs> no, I know where you live. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, maybe, you know, the backwoods. Uh, oh, Dan must not have uh, been here for Dave's page. Do you think we should show Dave's page again? Sure. What do you think? Dave, what do you think? Should we show your page again? Of course. All right. Bada bing, bada boom. There it is. Look at that. What do you think, Dan? He has to see it. Yeah, that's beautiful. I like the um, grayscale uh, clouds that uh, um, Gary inked back there. Uh, I'm not sure if he used um, uh, like a grease pencil or something like that. Do you know, Dave? No, no. It, I use this technique where I get a paper towel and I just streak over the over the uh, area and stuff to create you know kind of a, like a randomness and he never did it before so he tried it for the first time and now he he fell in love so oh that's cool <laughs> hey we got to welcome uh, another uh, uh, member of team testosterone here mr kelsey shannon what's up how are you sir hello hello Hey, look, I can see in Mike's face. The ball's on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I owe artwork to everybody in this room. And here <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm on it, to color I'm my on cover. It. Where's that Bass Reeves cover? It's done. I need to get with you today. I want to get with you today. So if you're not doing anything cool. later, cool. as soon as so I'm you done. You guys aren't as smooth I'm a talker here. with me. Huh? I said these other guys aren't as smooth a talker as me. I mean, you understand Irish Blarney, uh, so, so, so <laughs> yeah, I, Graham, I was Graham, able to Graham, connect with him. <laughs> it's all Graham's fault. <laughs> he teased me with this like amazing book. I was like, oh, uh, I, I kept saying, "Don't tell Mike. Don't tell Mike." <laughs> <laughs> and who's the first one in here? Mike. Mike, yeah. <laughs> oh, Kelsey's on track. He's focused like a laser. I'm, I'm actually <laughs> wanting to do the cover. Uh, uh, next week is I'm back on it. I'm back on it hard until it's done. So uh, I'm doing the cover. Can't wait to get that out. I want you to get this campaign going uh, like as soon as possible. So I, I, I got everything on this plate. Everything is going good. I'm excited. There's so many good things coming out. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's just good times. Isn't it? I mean, I, I'm loving it. I don't know how all you other guys feel. I know Kelsey and I talked about this the other day when he was on um, the storytellers, but you know, we're, we're in this like high right now about um, our business and, and, and what's going on and, and the projects we're getting to work on these. Not one of them is one of those. Uh, uh, and we've all had these, you know, where an editor will call you up and say, Hey, you want to do this? And you're like, Oh shit. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, it's got to be like a question, right? No, yeah. I, I, I need the money. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> we've all taken those jobs and, and, yeah. and what's really great is, is those aren't there, you know, <laughs> these are all really cool jobs, you know, and that we're creating for ourselves pretty much, you know, and oh, yeah. bringing our friends in too, into them. Well, I mean, getting to, getting to color Larry, I mean, that, that's like, I think I mentioned to you, that's like a bucket list thing. You know, that was like, a, uh, will I ever get a chance to work with this guy? I don't know, you know, and then the opportunity arises and it's like, oh, you know, the, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, check it out. Oh, nice. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Trying to, I was trying not to render it too much. So, oh, you know, but as we talked about, I mean, that's the kind of color I like where you use color theory to, to separate forms and, and to show emotion and, you know, you, and with the, just the right amount of modeling and rendering uh, is perfect, but you know, it doesn't have to be overboard. And, 
And this is, you know, when I looked at the black and white pages, you know, some sometimes there was a little clarity issues, you know, I was like, mm. what what is that? Because there's not a lot of stuff you can relate to because it's all made up. It's science mm -hmm. fiction in the future type of stuff. So, you know, there are certain keys that you look for and you um, and just because of you know, the rendering or, or, or the shadows or something, you can't really tell what you're looking at. But when the color is on. Kelsey did an incredible job of separating forms and 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 defining shapes, uh, so that it, everything just pops now. Well, I, I was having a hard time, like, uh, if Ridley Scott, huh? What, Dave? I was going to say, if Ridley Scott, saw, if Ridley Scott saw this page, he'd be short stroking it right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what's funny? You say that, uh, Dave, is it because um, when I read the script that Chuck sent, I, that's exactly what I thought. I thought, holy shit, this is a Ridley Scott movie. Yeah. You know, we just saw House of Gucci, which is uh, Scott's latest movie, uh, and it was very entertaining. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I'm actually curious about that and his other one, the. Um... The one with the the, uh, the duel, yeah, yeah, the duel, yeah. He yeah. did. He's often one that does like two in a year, you know. So, <laughs> I th I think the duel one is on HBO Max right now. Oh, okay. I don't have that, but <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I limit my uh, yeah, my uh, uh subscription services. <laughs> yeah, you many. have to. <laughs> yeah, but this was fun too because like uh, with the, you know. Uh, like um there's so many like like you're saying like weird things that you're like what is that or like how and there's so many different people and like having to keep track of everybody so i just made everybody right. the same color you know lit from the like dome light or whatever that was and, smart uh, yeah <laughs> well and also it helps simplify it but you know yeah because it, 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 he uses like every inch uh of space uh good luck to the letterer you know <laughs> <laughs> well Thankfully, Chuck is not a uh, verbose writer, uh, yeah. so you know the uh, the dialogue should be, uh, um, you know, pretty straight and to the point. Mm. I love it though. It was it was really interesting uh, when he was. I remember when he came back like a few years ago, and he was like, "My stuff's better now," you know. And I, you know, and I was like, "Okay, I'll take a look." And it like wasn't hitting me at first, mm -hmm. and then. I think it was like uh, last year or so. I was like, I'm going to go see because he's had a ton of stuff, new Alien Legion series and like just all kinds of things. And I went and like really took a hard dive and mm -hmm. was looking at what he was doing. And his storytelling is a lot more involved. And like there's just more energy, more life. You know, it's like uh, less of the design stuff, more just straight storytelling. But mm -hmm. he's still got that flair. You know, it's still in there. So yeah. I, I'm actually quite liking his new stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, he wanted to do sci-fi. And so I said, Chuck, you want to write sci-fi for Larry? He's like, I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Good the next deal. one up is Michael Golden. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what a get, man. I freaking right? love Michael Golden. Yeah, yeah. This I, must I, be the first continuity he's done in years. I think so. I, I can't think of anything that he's done uh, continuity-wise. The last thing I can think of was the Jackie Chan thing, and that was a good 10 years ago or something like that. Oh, yeah. wow. Ten. Was it longer? Oh, 20. Oh, my God. Has it been that long? <laughs> Holy cow. I still Holy have cow. all those issues. I flip through them, like, constantly. It's like a, a, a school for storytelling and action and so good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a there's a Indiegogo for it right now, a trade. That uh, oh. Renee is putting out. Oh, good. Yeah. Is is it live yet? Did you see some of the pencils on that? I don't know that it is. The pencils for oh yeah, they're so tight for uh, his Jackie mm -hmm. Chan thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very tight. Hopefully they'll put that in that book too. Yeah. But he was he was doing it for like Rick Magyar and like uh, who else was inking that book? A um, couple different guys. But since he's doing it himself, have you ever watched him at a show? Like, he'll just kind of, it's mostly done in ink. Like, he just kind of starts drawing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty amazing. How fun. Yeah, Is he going to call it? He's just reading an old ghost comic with Michael Golden in it today. Ghosts? What's that? Mm. Oh, here we go. 
another member of Team Testosterone has joined the team. Hey. There he is. Hi, Dan. How you doing, man? Good. Oh, Dan. Somebody I don't know artwork to. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Kelsey, how are you, guy? Good, man. How you doing? Good to finally talk to you. I know. I heard you pop on to the other show the other day, and it was like another guy that sounds kind of like Zach. <laughs> yeah, really? that's right. He does. <laughs> That's good, is. I think. Nice uh, yeah, it you, is. <laughs> this page rocks, by the way. Thanks. Loving it. Yeah, I, yeah. It's I, like I, I haven't done nice comics, you, real comics. That page anymore. looks great. Hey, thanks, Dave. Hey, Dave. Good to meet you too. I've never met you actually, just except through all this, you know, Facebook and stuff and stuff like that. <laughs> you can't see Dan because he's hiding behind an avatar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's Dave's hiding behind his drawing his table. I look just like that, though. I look like that guy right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the still naked. That's why I can't show yeah. myself. <laughs> David is just a hand. Oh, I thought that was your arm. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's moving. <laughs> i can't wait till dan's gonna put uh correct me if i'm wrong but you're gonna put anybody that sends in their books logo you're gonna stick it on that truck yeah i, I want to know i want to see that truck completely covered in <laughs> stickers man that, <laughs> i think it'd be hilarious yeah. that guy I, really I, likes comic skate oh. books yeah I'm putting, I'm putting some on the the car too because i'm running out of if i run out of space i'll just stick it on the car over there <laughs> You'd have one like falling. Oh, off, I got to send you know, the truth, Trump justice in American way. Yeah, yeah, send me send me a PNG PNG file, and I'll put it on there. Just plop it on. Cool. Yeah, because this this Roadhouse bar it must be like a just like a CG hangout. Yeah. <laughs> well, with women like that, I mean. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <Look at laughs> <the girl. laughs> so, Dan, was this girl based on anybody in particular? Uh, no, no, My I just. Dreams. Uh, you know, I, I had you. You wanted a page for me to show, and it was all talking, so I had to make something look pretty good. So I just, I made it really hot. You know. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I, I my first thought was like, oh my gosh, you know, you need to do a Gwen Stacy book, you know, because that that's who it, it jumped out at me as. But then people in the chat were saying it looks like Barbara Eden. Oh, yeah. it does. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can well, see the yeah, eyes. The, the upturned kind of eyes like that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The cat eyes. Yep. Yeah. And and that hey, mouth. let's face it, guys, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> what what is this for? Which story is this one for? This is Mike Barron's story. Oh, yeah. nice. Okay. Can yeah. you it's talk about what's in it? Nate like, Lemon. Have, you, have you described any of the stories yet? I have, but I'm happy to, to do it again. It's it's about a band playing a rural roadhouse, and there's not much activity until uh uh Four frat boys show up snorting coke and get a little frisky with the waitress. And at that point, the band realizes that they they have to step into action. They don't want to because they're just a band. Yeah. Uh, but they do with uh, spectacular results. <laughs> and uh, then the, the ending of the story will come as a real surprise. Let's just say spectacularly violent results. But there is mm. action. There is a super of action. That's what this book is all about. That's right. <laughs> you know what I like is that every story that I've heard too also has a fun kind of twist ending, a little bit of a, a, a raw doll kind of flipperoo at the end, or a, a little extra, you know, or so I don't know. I, I'm not going to spoil anything. <laughs> yeah, there's all yeah. there's like a, a hook or a something. Yeah, it's really fun. It's got to be yeah. a twist. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey Kelsey, I was saying earlier, uh, see that nice, beautiful collector, expensive guitar right there? Yeah. Guess what's gonna guess what's gonna happen. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Shh, shh. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> just don't say anything's it. gonna yeah. it's, it's, he's just gonna play it. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. <laughs> now, Mike has another story in the book called Gurkha on a Train, uh, that Butch Geist will be doing. Oh nice. Um, Butch Geist. Yeah. Butch. Uh, that one's based on a true story, right, Mike? Yeah. Well, it's just, it's just this. I thought there were going to be two uh, giant sized, uh, two fisted manly tails. Is this book getting bigger? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it's, got, it's not just you, Mike. It's <laughs> no, it's, uh, you know, there's five writers, two stories each, 10 oh, pages, 10 100 pages. pages. 
I get you. It yep. is bigger. It's, it's big. Huge. Well, I promised giant size, Mike. Yeah, so it is giant you know, size. I got to deliver. <laughs> it's a monster. <laughs> you know what? If this does really well, though, um, there could be something to visit as an annual. You know, you bet. Uh, this this is the kind. I mean, when you'd see this at the store, it usually was kind of an annual, uh, and those are the ones I would always jump for because it always had the, especially the artists that you would never see doing like regular stuff, but they would always get them to do like a story in one of those annuals. So mm -hmm. this felt like that. I'm like, oh my god, look at all the people in this book. <laughs> this is. Yeah. Cool. I totally would have gotten this. Well, that's why Wednesday. I did the um, uh, the trade dress to look like. Uh, those Marvel giant size, which was their annuals um, back in like 1974, 75, they, they mm. had that trade dress and I wanted to mimic that um, and get that kind of uh, feel to it. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause you know, we're telling these kind of really cool stories that nobody publishes anymore. <laughs> hey, is there a Michael Golden page yet? Yes. Oh, you missed All it. Right. Yeah. I didn't see that. Is he coloring that story too? Um, not that I'm looking uh, Mike, for more Mike, work. <laughs> Michael Michael Watkins is coloring it, and uh, okay. he's the guy that works with with Michael um, and understands his palettes and stuff like that. So uh, he'll Michael be supervising that work, I guess. Yeah, cool. All right. Yeah, yeah. Here's the here's the golden page. Oh, cool. This is from uh, my story, crossing the Rubicon. Yeah, this is another one that's going to have uh, um, some spectacular uh, moment in the middle, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're they're going to dispatch people in a spectacular way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I love I love the characters in the background. You know, I just said you know these gang guys. You know, uh, and yeah, I was thinking you know bikers or something like that. But but Michael has really uh, gone sort of uh, with this great cartoony um, looking gang, which which I love. There's a lot of a lot of character to these to these their body language and their clothing and everything, you know? I mean, you immediately hate them when you see the man bun. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. And that protruding jaw. You yeah. Know? <laughs> it's like, it just this. needs to be hit. <laughs> this guy's definitely up to no good. Yeah. This... <laughs> and, and I like the, do oh, oh, geez. Hey. We awesome. really blew it up. Hold on. Let's see if we can. Uh... See those What's he buns? doing this with? This is on uh, is it's digital. Is it... No kidding. He's doing digital stuff? Yeah, he's been doing digital for years. He's been doing digital for years. Really? Yeah. Well, I know he was all into yeah. the coloring and stuff, but I didn't know he was drawing digitally. That's Oh, awesome. yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. I like this guy with the beanie on his head. <laughs> he's <laughs> That's hiding a great his man bun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's hiding his man. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't get hit until the hat comes off and it's like oh, okay now you need to get hit <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why'd you hit that guy he's just got a hat on oh yeah. i see <laughs> so uh, there's a movie on uh uh tubi called cop shop it's brand new it stars frank grillo and uh that guy who was in 300 british actor oh, uh, oh. gerald butler Butler. Ger Ger Gerard Butler, yeah, Gerard and Butler, it's, yeah. it's it's really good. And Frank Grillo starts out with a man bun, uh, <laughs> but but when he gets out of his cell and ready to do some mayhem, he he unties the man bun and shakes his hair out, and then you know he's serious. <laughs> I thought you would say he's going to go like he's going to just cut it off. All right, now nobody can grab my hair. <laughs> Let's rock. Oh, now that's yeah. why you got to do the shaved head. So you go to grab your hair, can't get it. Bust them in the chops. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, I just Kevin's saw that, go that the second movie, issue um, of uh, uh, Truth and Justice in the American Way by Dave. I think, you know, I think it, I don't know if they're showing it publicly, but they sent the email out yeah. to, if you signed up. Do you guys see that second uh, cover? Yeah. Looks cool, no. really cool. I'm not sure I I've seen not. this second cover. Yeah. No, I haven't seen it. Dave, where is it? David Williams sucks. <sighs> <laughs> hey christina lynn hey you said it not me <laughs> well, at least not in this one <laughs> you know me i'm always talking behind your back david williams oh, yeah. <laughs> that's actually true <laughs> this guy golly man 
man. I can't. Who else is in this book? Okay, so you got um, Chuck, uh, Mike, Dan, David Williams, me, Larry Stroman, Michael Golden. You're writing some. Mm -hmm. um, Butch yeah. Geis is in it. Right. Dan. You got some European guy. Who was that guy with the plane airplane page? That looked oh, great. Uh, um, that's Andrew Paquette. He's not European. He's American. Oh, Paquette. Andrew yeah. is a real multi-talented guy. He writes for a number of online publications, too. Yeah. Like yeah, he, Red I think he shoots commercials. I mean, he does a lot of really? stuff. Really? Right? Yeah. So he's an hands. educator. He's a professor. Uh, he's a photographer. I mean, the guy's uh, multi-talented. I guess I was thinking it's European because the a, name and a damn nice guy. The name Paquette, yeah, uh, you know, definitely. sounds like. Uh, but his art style it reminds me of a lot of the European like books. It that does. I He's at. unique. Yeah, it yeah. reminded me of. Um, there was a guy that used to work at EC Comics um, who had that kind of blocky. Um, I want to say stiff figures, but I don't mean that in a pejorative sense. Uh, I, I I mean that the stylistically was that was that Elder. Was that Will Elder or um? No, it's the guy that did that one. Kurtzman or? No, I think. Are you talking about the one that did that short story with the guy on the train that sees the guy from? No, like that's the... Kriegstein. Kriegstein. That's okay. Bernie Kriegstein. Well, yeah. I think of blocky style back then. I always think of Kriegstein, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Now it might be Kurtzman who I'm thinking of, because uh, uh, you know, like when he did those war comics. Um, oh, I love that stuff. You know, yeah. they had a very stylistic look to it, and I think that's what um what Andrew's stuff reminded me of when I looked at his portfolio, because he had some mm. war stuff in there that he was doing with, um, with Chuck. Um, and it was great. And he, he's another guy uh, that has an incredible palette. Um, you know, he works digitally with that, but you know, his, his sense and use of color is fantastic. Mike, is that posters or did you wallpaper your house in your comic book? covers <laughs> is that like what is that those those are my uh show stanchions there's two of them oh. They're back against the wall usually i bring them up here and put them right behind me so you can't see the chaos in the room but today i just don't give a damn <laughs> i wonder <laughs> i wonder if you can get wallpaper made like that I'm not i want to get wallpaper <laughs> that would be fun uh oh cool. i think he's already done it uh oh now we're getting a tour yeah Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah so oh, dead fun. man. Oh, yeah. man. Uh, Chris Brawley had those made for me. And if you guys don't know who Chris Brawley is, he's the man behind Bleeding Fool. Oh, no oh okay. And Bleeding Fool exists because for every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And you didn't think you'd get a physics lessons today, folks. <laughs> well, it's usually a kick in the groin, but, you know, making a new website is a good one, too. <laughs> you know, that is a very apt description of Bleeding Fool. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, it is. You're yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, a, a, a different perspective <laughs> on the same story. Yeah, it's called the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Called good journalism. <laughs> Don't say that, Kelsey. You, you're gonna oh. get you're you're gonna get uh, run out of YouTube? town on a rail. Oh, okay. Canceled. <laughs> They'll come Cancel. to your pets. Uh, you canceled. Yeah. <laughs> Bring them. <laughs> okay. I honestly don't even think about it. It's so funny, man. I come out here like this is this is the industry. This is closer to what it was like when I got in. You know, uh, when everybody was very excited and, and ideas were flying around and people were excited to do things and, you know, there was like an right. energy into the air. I mean, mm -hmm. can't get books out fast enough. That's what it feels like, you know? Yeah, it, yeah. And no no idea is too crazy, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. If you feel there's an audience for it, you can find an audience for it. Mike's um, like, I got an idea. I, it's pretty crazy. I don't know. <laughs> you know, you know what it reminds you of is like, remember when uh, Kirby left Marvel and he went to DC, uh, and he, you know, oh, he yeah. started off with his his fourth world stuff, but then you know that wasn't going well, and then so you know he had the contract to honor and stuff, and so he starts banging out a bunch of uh, just just crazy ideas. Um, and the same thing when he went back to Marvel in '76. Um, uh, his handling of stuff like a devil dinosaur and, and, and machine oh, and all this crazy yeah. shit. Um, 
Oh, wait, Commandy. That was I love Commandy. Yeah. And I love the demon. Um, yeah. And, and even Omac, you know, if it wasn't for the shitty inking on Omac, that'd be a much better book. <laughs> Is that everybody's favorite, like, period of Kirby? Because, like, that generally that's like, I think that's probably some of my favorite stuff. I, I, it's one of my favorites from the point of view that he's completely unleashed. And so, like I, the point being is that he would take crazy ideas and make them interesting and, and yeah. entertaining, you know, um, What's where amazing they all is all the ancient them. alien stuff he's got in his stuff. And now it's like a whole industry, the ancient aliens. <laughs> oh yeah. He was yeah. tapping into all that way back then. Hey, yeah. You guys, do you think he needed Stanley though? Do you, I mean, cause it, did seem like when he left, yeah. he didn't have the stand with him. I yes, I do. I don't think yes, his stuff absolutely. Early quite on, worked he as needed well. a big time. Yeah, you you always need a Stan Lee because we're uh, you know a lot of us are on the grind. We're busy in our heads thinking of cool stuff, just like Kirby was. And you, you know you you need that front man, that guy out there hyping the crowd up. And you know he was great at that. You know, regardless. I mean, I mean of his... actually about. I mean, acting as an editor, though. I mean, oh, maybe seeing you know. the ideas and saying, "Hey, that sucks," or make this. You know, mm -hmm. I I feel like Stanley just had that that business sense. He was like a he, he was like a, a George Lucas type who knew you know what worked yeah, and yeah, what didn't. Vision. Maybe yeah, uh, Stan had his pulse on the market. Yeah, there's no no doubt about it, and he humanized the characters. Whereas whereas Kirby, his writing is very very high concept and very. Uh, you know, in your face. Uh, whereas Stan, you know, he was able to soften that stuff and, and, and create um, uh, just a much more emotional uh, connection to the characters um, than when Kirby wrote the stuff himself, mm. you know? I don't know. I don't read any of this trash. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I love those old stories though. You know? <laughs> You know, we, Kelsey, we were talking about, you know, the, the three things that uh, uh, make great comics, you know, um, um, uh, clarity, dynamics and immersion. And mm -hmm. one of the storylines that completely immersed me and still does is that Thor story uh, with um, a man gog. Mm. You guys remember that story? Oh, man gog, the, oh, yeah. the, the, yeah. the power of a billion, billion beings and uh -huh. uh, it was so great that this this character Mangog was like marching to Asgard to destroy it to, and get even with Odin. And you know the big MacGuffin is that that um, Odin is in the Odin sleep from which he cannot be awakened because it would mean his death. And so Mangog just slogs through all of Asgard and, and four and 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 the the warriors three and all this shit. And he 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 gets to Asgard. He's going to draw the Odin sword. And when you do that, Ragnarok happens. You know, it's the end of the universe. And the recorder is there. You remember that character? You know, he records yeah. everything. You know, and he's in the background. Yeah. And the cosmic swirl is going on. And Mangog is pulling the sword out. And Thor is hanging onto the sword with his hammer, going bam, bam, bam. <laughs> and Ooh. nothing is. You know, it was just. It was so cool. And and the recorder saying, you know, the end of the universe is nigh upon us. Blah blah blah. blah you know. <laughs> And then what he's a, like, oh, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> uh, God, it was so great. And we're so taking great. care of it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then, of course, you know. Yeah, that sounds awesome. O Odin win, uh, wakes up and, and, and uh, you know, and zaps up Mangog. And, uh, was this, this was the Kirby stuff then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was like Lee and Kirby at their peak, you know. Oh, nice. Yeah. Odin wakes up and he's all, quiet, quiet. I said quiet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Odin, Odin, damn it. I'm sleeping. <laughs> then it turns yeah, into I'm a Tex Avery out. cartoon. And so. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I, yeah, I need to read some of that. I, I've been trying to like read a lot of the, you know, the old stuff because uh, there's so much I've, I've not gotten to. You know, you once you get busy working, it's like, you know, I read scripts. That's what I read. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, primarily. So I'm trying to like take time out to like go through some some of this old stuff that I've missed. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, I don't know how you guys like are, this one, uh, Dead Man, uh, Kelly Jones, and Mike Barron there. Yeah, <laughs> this stuff is so fun, man. That's a game changer. That one. I love it, Mike. You wrote uh. uh Dead man stuff. That's all of yeah. this. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like the recreation of Dead Man. Did you work with um didn't Jose Luis Garcia Lopez do a bunch of that stuff? Am I thinking of that right? Well, he may have done Dead Man, but he did illustrate an issue of Nexus. Oh, oh I didn't know that. Did he really? Yeah. Ooh, yep. oh, I gotta look that up. He's like his, one of my his Teen Titan stuff was phenomenal. I may have copies, guys. If you're interested, just let me know and I'll oh, send I'm yeah. interested. Yeah, so I want one. When was okay. that? Always in the 80s. Okay, because I, I remember going back through and there's like a whole period in the beginning that I missed. Uh, and like I was going through it uh not that long ago. And seeing how much I missed, Paul Smith did a nice little run on Smitty it. Smitty had the longest run outside of Dude, and he was probably uh, the closest next to Dude to the concept. Oh, he did really? a great job. I you know, uh, Carl Potts was telling me once that John Visema came in the offices, and he was kind of complaining about the art quality and things like that. And he was flipping through comics, you know, comics just going, this is, what's this crap? And he got to Jose Luis Garcia Lopez's work, and he started to he started slowly, slowly turning the pages over, <laughs> going, "Holy <laughs> shit! You know, this yeah. guy is this guy can draw. I mean, why can he's he draw? a beast." And I, I can't. I I've gone back like is it's it's always good. Like you go back to his stuff before he came to like DC and stuff. It was like amazing. Yeah, he's I was one of those guys. Some just... of his stuff at Charlton. I I didn't realize yeah. that uh, Lopez had gotten his start at Charlton, and uh, you know. There's something about those Charlton books. I, it's the paper or the printing or, or, or all of the above that makes even great artists look crappier than they are. Um, but but, but uh, you can still see the greatness pop through. It's like Garcia Lopez, uh, Giordano, Ditko, um, and uh, Don Newton all worked there yeah. and, and had some really great runs. Don Newton's Phantom was amazing. His Batman yep. stuff is awesome. Oh yeah. yeah, Bob Layton did some Charlton stuff. Did he? Yeah, that's probably who's working probably with Dick, right? Because wasn't he an assistant to Giordano? Yep, yep. Oh, I'm gonna bow out. I'm gonna cede my time to Kelsey. Kelsey, don't blow it. Okay, you got it, man. Okay. <laughs> see you guys. Hey, thanks for popping in, Mike. Okay, later. We'll Here, I got he some. Didn't I got say some. It, uh, he's got to go to bed. <laughs> some Lopez uh, Nexus. Oh. Apparently it's it's inked by uh, John was it John Nyberg? Yeah, John Nyberg, who I used to love back in the day. Now he's a little stiff for me now, but oh nice, yeah. Look at this creature. Looks good and wild. Solid. Yeah. I love the uh physicality of Garcia Lopez's figures. You know, they're yeah. long, they're they're proportional, they're but they're long legged, but not I mean, I don't know how to describe it, but they're they're almost like perfectly proportioned. This looks real similar to how I'm drawing him now. He's like a little bit of lighting in the black. You know what I love was that oversized uh, Hulk versus uh, uh, Batman. Batman uh, versus Hulk? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was fantastic Kelsey, stuff. Kelsey, you oh notice how he could get away with no backgrounds? Yeah. <laughs> that was the 80s. It was simpler times, right? <laughs> well, if you, could, if you could draw figures like that, you know, what the heck? Oh, that's true. Yeah. 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 Are you trying? Yeah. David's trying to get out of drawing backgrounds, is what he's saying. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's how I got out of drawing backgrounds. I always yeah. pick up Garcia Lopez. I say, hey, look at this. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you, I, I, you don't need backgrounds in every panel. You only you yeah, only need it to right. establish the scene. You know. I kind of push some backgrounds. Then they get in the way of the, they get get in the way of the action. If it's an action sequence, all you have to mm -hmm. do is establish the, the the scene and then let 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 it rip. You know, Graham, that page I just drew, uh, I fudged some backgrounds there. I just, I blurred out. But there's there was a lot of, you know, word balloons that I'm expecting to go in those. You know, there was some, you know, decent dialogue. And I figured, right. I'm not going to draw, like, you know, the Mike said something like, yeah, I have a ram's horn head and stuff like that. And like, I'm not going to spend all day doing that. <laughs> it's going to oh. cover it up with a word bubble. You know? What do you guys <laughs> think about doing True. European style where you're not necessarily drawing you're not doing all the lettering on the page but you're at least putting the word balloon so that you're not wasting a whole lot of time drawing underneath it uh which i've you know i find myself if i don't have the balloon in there i'll fill mm -hmm. up that space uh so like I've, I've really thought about it lately about actually like physically drawing the word balloon in but you know there's always like 
you know, what about, what about rewriting and stuff? I mean, do they ever do that? Like, do they, how do they change the shape of the bubble, you know? And I don't well, know. now it's digital, so it's easy to do, but, uh, back in the day, yeah, but you have to pull out the whiteout. <laughs> yeah. But that's what I'm talking about. Like even now digitally, or, or if you're doing <laughs> it, knowing that it's going to be digitally lettered, you know, right. do your own balloons on your pages though. You know, but, uh, you know, you I know, know. I'd, I'd like to do that if I could, but it's, it's cause I think it is actually part of the art. Yeah. When you yeah. draw on a, a word bubble, I'm it's that's all the, the graphic. You know, it's a graphic. Yeah. Okay. I said, I'm going to be blocking out the balloons on my pages. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, every artist should do that. If you've got a full script and you know, what's being said, you know, um, just throw an overlay or, or, or a layer if you're working digitally over it and, and indicate where the word balloons are going to go so that, it, um, you know, it helps the letterer. And then it also helps you to, you know, but my, my, the thing is, is like, like I'm, I got a shot right now that I'm doing that has like these two guys on a, they're sitting down on a, on a subway platform and there's all these people behind them and, and the shot is framed so that they fill up the whole panel and then you just see legs and stuff. Uh, and maybe the tops of some people's heads, like in the background. Okay. And I know that a word balloon is going to cover some of that stuff, but since the word balloon's not there, I got to draw it. I can't just leave it mm. blank because what if they don't put the word balloon in the right spot? So <laughs> right, it's just more work, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I'm trying to get out of doing more work is what I'm saying. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to make that, my job easier. Come on, that, guys. that's my plan too. <laughs> you know, see, that that's what shadows are for. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, mm. look at look at Kubert stuff. You know, uh, mm. he 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 puts details where he wants you to look, and then he just indicates loosely uh, to to allow your eye to go to that focal point. You know, and then you can stick the word balloons. You know, you got all those all that spot. Mm. You know, hey, I, hey I, Kelsey, I, what about when you get one of those uh, blank panels like they just have words only, like a Frank Miller type thing? What do you mean, like uh, uh, like a bla like a blacked a blacked out panel, and it just has words with like they're taught. There's voiceover going, so to speak, oh, in the story. That sounds great. I know. Let's, just uh, do, let's do, do the, the blackout the, issue where the, yeah, the whole yeah. comic book like that. They they don't write enough scripts like that. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, Byrne did the whole white one, you know, where yeah. the whiteout issue, and I'm yeah. like, I don't think anybody's done the blackout issue. Have yeah. with all you see, black like you have a couple of shots with the eyelids kind of opening, and yeah, just uh, some eyes going around. And then then they then they close, <laughs> and then the rest is the rest of the story is just black. Yeah, <laughs> the glint of a sword come out maybe, Shing. and then yeah. you know, some like, you can, the, the character opens their eyes and for a second. Yeah, yeah or, 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 or he he lights a match, you know, to see, and then you right. see all the shit around him, you know. <laughs> yeah, I love that stuff. I think like they did in, that in Bone. That was yeah. so good. <laughs> Remember in, in Pee Wee's Big Adventure when, when he's, he's yeah. just those things. It's like the eyeballs floating through the dark and everything. And then he lights up a, a, a match or something like that, and the every lions. animal in the, <laughs> the kingdom is around him. Going, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that has to be like some Chuck Jones action right there. That had the. I'd bet money that he did that. What was that? Somebody was echoing. Oh, I thought it was a CB coming through. Good buddy, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> it was you. It was it was your voice. Oh, that well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> hey, talk about good old boys. So Dan, Dan, man, it's great to have you here. I, I've been a fan of your stuff since I'm guessing Star Lord, that painted Star Lord really? book. Uh, it blew my mind uh, oh, when that came out because it you're I've never seen anybody at least at the time fill the page with characters as big as you did, huh. and I don't know it seemed like huge. Everybody, hey, you said warm. I do that. You do do that, but I I was actually I think I was a fan of Dan's before I was a fan of yours. To be honest, <laughs> you were I hard to find. I tell you David, what, you back know... in the day, I'll tell you the first time I saw David Williams' stuff. It was a set of stamps. And I didn't even know it was David Williams. David, do you even remember what I'm talking about? It was like X-Men The X-Men The yeah. X-Men stamps, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I didn't even know that was yours. And then I got the Madman, uh, the Madman card set, and you had done a card in there, and it said David Chateau Williams. And like he said, <laughs> that's the way he credited you is like Chateau. And I remember me asking you about that. 
and you were like, how did yep. you know that? Or something. I'm like, it's on the card. It's like, <laughs> it's public. Wasn't that a Charles Bronson <laughs> movie? Shadows. Shadow. C H A T O. My, yeah, yeah, my my mother-in-law used to call me uh, Chato Flaco because it means pug. So because of my <laughs> nose. <laughs> and so I would sign it, uh, David Chato Williams. So that might be that might be like Alred poking a little fun at you then, right? Like no, putting Chato you know, in there? You know, I, was, I, was, I was using it. And also I was doing it because... Uh, I didn't feel like I had a style that people could discern who I was. Like if I would just do a drawing and people would know who it is. Like if Arthur Adams did a drawing, you go, oh, there's Arthur Adams. You know, so I was signing it with these weird names. I think I even signed some of my work Spade. Oh, <laughs> you know? wow. Yeah. <laughs> I was way out there and, and just <laughs> trying to obscure. I was just trying to obscure my name to see if people could find out, oh, you know, if this was David Williams. So there's plenty of work that's listed under Chato or Spade or whatever. So <laughs> Alex Ross even put, Alex Ross put me in Kingdom Come as the character Spade. And I got killed in this double page spread where I'm on the floor uh, right next to Superman and Captain Marvel. So he used my, you know, character Spade and had me killed in there. I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Hold on, I was yeah. gonna pull pull something up. I, I wanna uh oh here it is, here it is, here it is. Let me share this real quick. Um here we go. Share screen. Oh my oh. god, so many steps. Maybe it was Johnny Craig when I was talking about Andrew. Um oh yeah, because Johnny Craig had that kind of angular. I wonder if it was Craig I was thinking of. Thanks, Marcus. All right, you got a uh, something to share? Yeah, some okay. more Dan Lawless. Oh yeah, this yeah. thing. When I saw that, I I saw you kind of. I was like, oh, I see Dan Lawless. I, I hadn't thought of you in a while. And then I I was like, let me see what he's been up to. And I was I saw this, and I I was floored, man. I I love this piece so much. So good. Yeah, you know my my neighbor uh, does a lot of mountain biking, and and he brought this you know this dirt rag magazine across the street. He goes, you should do a cover for this. And I thought. Yeah, why I don't I? And yeah. I, so I, I literally <laughs> illustrated this. I I put it together as a mock, you know, cover. Sent it to the dirt rag guys, and they loved it. Oh, so that's they cool. made posters of it, everything. In fact, in in one issue, the, the, uh, uh, like a follow up issue, somebody got a tattoo of it of that really? image. Kidding. Ah. <laughs> so that was pretty cool, you know. Like, yeah, I want those rims too, man. Look at those red rims on that bike. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, this guy, That's this guy, awesome. like I want, I want the first, uh, like bicycle superhero, uh, or uh, anti-hero guy. You know, he's like a Punisher, but he rides a bicycle around. <laughs> <laughs> he could like jump on. You know, like, you ever see that? Uh... Like Racer X. Yeah, right. He does it. Yeah, it's kind of like that. What's that movie with the the bicycle messengers that came out like a few years back with the? Uh... Oh man, who's that kid? Oh, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot the name. Of yeah, it, it was. It was fun. It was just a simple movie, guys but they do Robin. a lot of like, yeah, it, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Um, in, in they Dark do some Knight like Rises, bicycle, too. like parkour in it. You know where they're jumping on cars and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. So you could do that. I just you know, saw funny, a video of a guy uh, on, on one of those bikes hopping across, like there was like a culvert, and in the culvert was like these stanchions, and like they had uh, rebar sticking up out of him. And this guy is on his bike, and he's bouncing from each stanchion to stanchion, avoiding the rebar so he doesn't puncture his tire, and goes across the water like uh, that. <laughs> I'm like, jeez, uh, it's magic. You know, you yeah. know, it's funny though. Now, now the the, the bikes. Are starting to look like that bike. They're they're all getting those big fat tires and yeah, you know, I love huge it. frames. And I, do you ever see those videos the BMX of, those guys on the bikes going down those mountains? It's it's like a racetrack, but it's on oh, a mountain, and there's like these, you know, there's like eight thousand feet below you. You know, and on these little rails, and they're jumping up and oh my god, I get I get crazy dizzy looking at that. You know, oh my god, Brian suddenly old said cyclopath. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Oh, you better copyright that quickly, Brian. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, you yeah. better do it because I'm going to do it. I right like now. it. No, <laughs> Kelsey's in front of his computer. He, he's already on the. Uh... I've already finished the comic book. It's done. Hey, uh, hey, Kelsey, that that bike is kind of loosely based on my own bike. I have a cruiser bike that's called a Straight Eight. It's made by Electra Bicycles. Yeah, and it's got like it's got big fat tires like that. So I kind of made it into a mountain bike. But actually, if you, guys, if you could do a, if you could do a search, just look for a, a, the uh, straight eight made by Electra bicycle. Do you have the um, what do you call it the uh, the red rims, or is that something you just made up? I made up the red rims, but it does have checker uh, checkerboard uh, rims. Oh yeah, actually, I think, I think it's got okay. Red spokes, but um. I was gonna. There's a great a, like, picture. It's got an eight ball on the side. It's got an eight ball on the on the frame. Uh, this is a family show, so I'm not gonna show that. There's a great one with a model standing next to. <laughs> <laughs> She's got great tires. I don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, this is the, the company is Electra Electra Bicycle. Oh, I love the and, kind of old and, school and the, look and the of name it. of the bike is called the Straight Eight. It looks like an old. Almost like an old Harley or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Cyclopath. Yeah. Oh, here, let me show it. Uh, I forgot. I'm sitting here staring at it. Um, <laughs> let me do the 10 clicks to get something to show up. Uh, there it is. No, his sidekick is kickstand. Yeah, that's it. That's kickstand. my bike, man. Yeah. Kickstand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 it's spoke. spoke. He's always leaning on him. Oh, spoke. That's a good one spoke. too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> spokes. Get that guy, uh, spokes. <laughs> <laughs> so you put like monster tires on this thing? It comes that way. It's that's that's stock and for their company. Yeah. Oh, Man, I want that, that bike grit. so bad. I know it's so cool. Can you Everybody still get them? On it. You can still buy them? Yeah, yeah. Except uh Man, the the, pi the prices of bikes have gone through the roof. Is that I think like that a composite I think it's like a thousand bucks now? When I bought that, it was five hundred dollars. Oh wow! Well, that's got to be like a composite material, right? That's light, super light. It's a, it's got an aluminum frame, yeah. So, mm. oh, it's aluminum, so it's probably heavier than the than the, the, the uh, composite. Yeah, it's not it's not a terribly heavy bike, but because uh, of you know, say because of the aluminum, but. Uh -huh. well, that thing's all tire too, so I mean <laughs> that's where your weight is, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's killer. Yeah, well, I just have an old crappy van, no bikes. <laughs> I'm so out of shape. I used to ride bikes everywhere when I was a kid, and then somewhere, somewhere in my late twenties, <clears throat> I I got on a bike and biked all around. It was so fun. It was great, and then. Later that night, the tops of my legs, whatever those muscles are on the top, they were the quadriceps. Is that what they are? The quads? Okay. I knew he was going to he was going to correct them real quick. Of course he knew. Yeah, but they just stopped working. Like I couldn't stand up for like uh, at least a day. It was they just stopped working, and it didn't like hurt up to that point. It was just like, eh, hey, biking's fun. And then later, it was like, oh my god, <laughs> that was the end of my biking days. I, I like never liked biking. Back exercise. Those 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 freaking seats, man. It's like you ride for an hour and your balls hurt. <laughs> well, Graham, that's why that's why I got the cruiser bike. That's like it's. It, it looks cool, but it, it's really a geriatric bike disguised as a cool bike. Yeah. <laughs> it makes, room, okay, it makes room for your balls. Yeah. <laughs> you you got to quit tucking those things, Graham. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd rather take that bike, put it in the bed of my big old GMC truck, and then drive yeah. away. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to ride a bike. I could injure my gas pedal foot, and, you know, it's just yeah. bad. Yeah. <laughs> hey, now, now they got the battery powered ones, you can just use those. Oh, yeah, they used hey, to now call we're them talking. mopeds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there was well, actually, really cool yeah. about them. They have a you know the battery like assist. It's you're kind of you're kind of pedaling, but it just gives you more power, yeah, more speed. Ooh. A lot I've of commuter lot guys of use those, using those lately. I need to get my house working that way. I need to <laughs> power up my own house. Just... <laughs> Would you do that? Like if no you can like power. Art. 
if you could like power your computer while you were working by just like pedaling, would you do that? No. No, no, that's how they used to sew clothes, you know, pedal the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah, know. You know I, I, my brother is an electrical engineer, and I, and I said to him, uh, you know, Graham, you know, you lift weights. I said, what if I like lifted weights, like, you know, for an hour or something, you kind of lift the weight up into the air mm-hmm. and then it came down. Could you like power anything with that? He's like, no, <laughs> uh, yeah. it's not enough, huh? But you know, your no. figure, I mean, I was just thinking like, if you could uh, take a crank uh, and, and you, know, you can lift up a car, that's a thousand pounds or something like that with it, mm-hmm. with a car lift, if you could lift that into the air and then it comes down and spins a, a generator. I don't mm-hmm. know, would it work? Uh, and he said no. So, <laughs> did you say Picard? Uh, t- I say if you if you took a, a jack and lift up a car, you know, oh. it's like a thousand pounds or something I like that into the, the air. Board. When that thing comes down, it's a lot of force. So if it, you know, if you put it through the, a gear system, I don't know. Well, you think about uh, one of those rowing machines, you know, uh, where you're you're bent over and you pull the the, the cable and you're pulling. Yeah, that thing you've spinning. Got that thing spinning and spinning and spinning. Yeah. The same thing is is those bikes that that power things. You know, it's just that the 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 return ratio on the amount of energy used to generate it, I think that's the problem. You know, it's like you know, yeah, you're going to be on there for an hour, and you're going to need to cook up, you know, eight thousand calories to refeed yourself and then that that energy that it took to cook all that food wasn't enough to what you mm-hmm. generated <laughs> for your house you know it's like just seems like it'd be inefficient actually you know yeah. I, I think that sort of uh, thinking outside the box is interesting because there are places there's some island out in the in the pacific or something that they run everything with wind power and oh, then yeah. the wind power sh- uh, channels the uh the uh, the water uh, pumps to send them up to a basin, and then when the wind dies down, they use the water flowing from the from the uh, basin t- mm-hmm. through a dam to j- continue. The, and, they're, and they're energy free. It's it's but you got to have wind and um, yeah and water <laughs> and, and 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 water. You know, in elevation. I guess yeah. that's how they how they figured out because I remember looking at this a long time ago about having like a self perpetuating energy thing, but there was always like a. You know, there's it never was level or up. It was always yeah. this. You know, eventually it would die out because it just couldn't generate enough power to kind of keep the system going. But I guess with the addition of like wind, you know, because like when one system goes out, the other one kicks up. What was that? Do you see that? It, yeah, it looked like alien. So your beer goggles? What was, <laughs> what was? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I got to see it again. I got instant playback right over here. <laughs> yeah. uh, it looked like one of those old uh, flashes from an old camera, you know, the one. <laughs> that was his MC Escher uh, moment. I got to see your whole room yeah. in that shot. Man. <laughs> yeah, okay. Is that what that was? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's interesting to see the uh, Dave to see your those drawings on your uh, desktop. They're pretty big. <laughs> Dan's trying to be serious and he's playing. Yeah. <laughs> Dave's playing with his toy. What right. did you say about his drawings? They're larger. Like, like looking at them, they're, they're larger than I would think. Uh, you know. Yeah. I was losing my mind over that the other day. He was showing me some of this stuff and I was, I, d- I had no idea either. And the scale of it. Yeah. Oh man. I, I want to draw on paper again so bad. I'm doing it. Do it. I need a scanner. That's what. I'd... You know. You know what I think would be kind of cool is to uh, draw twice as, as size. Like, uh, didn't Kirby used to draw much larger on some? I always wonder what that'd be like oh, to draw yeah. big ass picture and then reduce it down because it does it does really get sharper looking when you when you take something large and. I did. I did a project yeah. where I worked twice up. Uh, How was that? What, that was called you know golden age size. And it was twice yeah. up. Was uh, that faster then... or slower? slower because you got more to put in <laughs> yeah yeah that's, that's done that that's, too yeah that's part of the problem with the computers that i found it like i when i was first doing using my tablet and i decided to, to do my storyboards with it it right. took me twice as long because i because you zoom in you know you all of a sudden you're zooming in mm. on this stuff and you're right. really doing a larger area right see, i'd so love to do wait. like see this poster i got on the wall the mignola uh-huh like whatever I, that's it has it's oh. like it feels like twice up like that. Uh, it's not, uh, it's like four comic book pages put together. 
And I, I think I would, when you get up close to it, the rendering doesn't look that big. So it looks like if you were to draw like at that scale, you know, and keep all the detail big, you know, I think that that might be a good way to do it. I've been thinking about that too, drawing like poster size. <laughs> I tell you, I'm, I'm drawing more and more on my tablet now. Ever since I got the this display screen, remember Graham? I was asking you about that before. I was like asking around before I bought mine. I'm like, anybody know about this stuff? And Graham's mm -hmm. like, he's telling me about it. But his this is like, and, but oh, I tell and you, procreate. It's, it's, it's just amazing to to uh, now. I mean, I'm I'm beginning to to feel like it's a bit of a crutch. I don't know if I can even draw normal. <laughs> but, oh, uh, on procreate. Is, did you do this just, in procreate? Dave? That's all. That's just Photoshop. Oh, that's okay, yeah. But the, you know the 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 thing that I that I find almost most useful in the drawing stage is to flip it. Yeah. When you when right. you flip it, you see your flaws immediately. Mm -hmm. Right. And I work it all out. And uh, but you know, how many times I went through here and just kind of adjusted this guy's face, his, his ear, moved it this way or that yeah. way. You know, you just can't do the, that with the pencil very. Yeah. Very easily. The one thing I noticed about going back is is that I have no patience. Cause like with, with digital, I just quickly like erase or undo and redo. Mm -hmm. But then I, I was experimenting with like some live art not that long ago. And I'd go to do something, not really like considering it just, you know, and then I was like, Oh no. And then I was like, Oh yeah, I got to get white out and stuff. You know, and immediately it was like, ah, oh, this is like a whole other thing. I gotta. <laughs> and you smear it, and yeah, you, you have to be like way more layer over because the black is still coming through when it dries, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a pain. You know, it's you know, it's a funny experience. I, you know, I, I went to my my daughter's uh, soccer game, and I was watching it, and I sort of looked down for a second, and I missed something, and I for a second I thought, can I just rewind it? <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah, because all the sports we watch, you know, you can just rewind it with your remote control. Yeah. Well, you know, the like, last like, I, I, where's my remote? I can just go back and just see. <laughs> the last three years I've been working um, digitally on my iPad. And uh, I was at a convention this past summer, a terrific con in Connecticut. And I was doing a, a commission for a guy. And I realized, you know, that like there's some small details on the eyes that I was having trouble to see, you know, with my bifocals. And I, I took my fingers to the paper and went like this to expand it. <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, one of those moments where you look around. Did anybody see that? I hope yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I've gotten Let a me, lot of courage from you, watching. How? Go ahead. I was going to say, ahead, can Dave. I ask you, digital guy, something? Yeah. Uh, do, do, you, do you regret not having originals? Yes. In some no. way. Yeah. Okay. I do. No. <laughs> I think I, I will. You don't, Graham. I got you make a lot of money years of originals. originals, dude. That's true. Graham has done probably ten times more stuff than than all three of us combined. So I'm sure his stacks are high. <laughs> I, I've got FedEx sure. boxes. I've got flat files. I've got, and I stopped selling it about twenty years ago. So yeah. I got oh, a lot okay. of stuff. I'm just starting to get. Uh, I've got a couple of pieces going up on Heritage. You, um, you know, David, I think I'm going to probably. Like when someone comes to me and says, "Hey, can I get the first page of that uh, mm -hmm. that uh, Two Fisted Tales uh, comic?" And I'll be Here, like, "I don't have it. <laughs> it doesn't exist." You know? Here's what I'm gonna do. I've actually thought about this. You know how your highest selling pages are usually the money shots, right? Those are the ones that everybody wants. You know, the big character shots, a, a cool action shot, an iconic sure. shot. You lay out your pages, and you pick a couple that you're gonna do for real. I've heard of people doing that. Yeah. That way you're not wasting your, you know, you don't, you, you do the rest, the stuff that nobody really wants, you know, you do those digitally, uh, hmm, you know, and then you do some key shots to, to give out to the, you know, the comic book fans. That's not a bad idea. Art fans. Yeah. It's, it's sort of like you're doing a commission drawing for yourself that yeah. you're going to get paid for anyway, because <laughs> it's part of the storyline. Yeah. Yeah, and then you can sell it and get repaid. That's you can put idea. it on uh, the campaign, so you got a little bit of original art for anybody that right. wants it. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, All right, I'm just wondering about like, I think David. I, I mean, you guys that did the the twice up. How did you reproduce it? Did you ha did you have to cut it in half to scan it in, or did you take photos of it? How did y'all do scan that? Scan it in pieces. You scan it in pieces and stitch it together. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, 
when Sounds I was like doing it, there wasn't any scanners. So you had to uh, photograph. <laughs> I had to FedEx it to uh, yeah to uh, uh, Eclipse Comics, who who would shoot film, you know, shoot photostats. Did they have a table that like held the artwork in place, and then the camera over it with lights and all that? Like, how did yeah. they? To get they, used to the, they used to have a, a photostat cameras, you know, it would be its own room. It was a big ass camera with a flat area and then the, the lighting on it and everything. And that's what they used to use to to shoot the artwork. That's Marvel and DC used, you know. That seems way more efficient than a scanner. That still seems way more, especially with digital cameras where you don't have to wait for film development and all that. To me, that sounds way yeah. more efficient than the scanner because a scanner... I mean, you're not, it's, it, I don't know. There's a degradation of the image immediately, you know, uh, it's just off somehow. Cause it's being, and then it takes forever too. Like, mm -hmm. you, you know, I mean, with a camera, you just get all the lights on, focus it in, click done. Yeah, but you it's not a file. digital camera. It has to be developed. So now you've got, uh, chemicals and you've got, uh, you know, uh, the paper that all has to be developed. So that takes a long time and it's stinky and it's wet and it has to dry. But with our digital cameras these days that can, I, they're still nowhere near the resolution of those old analog cameras. So I guess it still wouldn't be, you're still getting a degradation of the image, I guess, with digital. Uh, yeah, you're right. But yeah, that's can't that's go completely old school. I'm trying. <laughs> you're trying like hell, aren't you? I'm so much. I, I'm trying. <laughs> I want to do the old technique of hand coloring books on the blue line with the overlay of the ink. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dying to do that. Hand painted comic book you're stuff. Crazy. I mean, that's how, huh? I'm crazy. You're crazy. Just do, yeah, just do pencil and ink. Your coloring on digital is. It's awesome. Yeah, but I mean, there'd be like a great, you know, if the right project, like if I, like for Fard and the Gray Mauser, I always look at that book and it's got great, like hand painted, you could see all the brush strokes in it. And this, again, I'm going to show you this piece right here. This one right here, colored by uh, uh, Mark Chiarello. And I just thought it was, you know, like you normally do, but I got up close to it and it's hand painted. That's a blue line. Yeah. So I don't know how he's got those perfectly flat colors. I asked him and he was like, I right, just put color down. I'm like, oh, come on, man. Give me some tricks. Give me some technique. I've never Mark's, seen flat color Mark's applied amazing. like that. Huh? Mark's amazing. How do you, he's you must be using secret. <laughs> look, I've, I've been messing with paint for 30 years, man. And I have never seen uh color applied that perfectly flat there's always some like unevenness you know where mm -hmm. the, the color is not as rich here you got too much water or something unless it's like dr martin's inks or something or right it and that's really hard to use camera was... reads it sometimes yeah you know, maybe never... maybe yeah um mm. let's take a peek at the campaign uh, when you sell vinyl oh look well, 73 fizzle bizzles 776 backers we got five days left on the initial 30 uh of this campaign uh we'll probably go an extra two weeks uh i, I like to go 45 days on my campaigns mm. um if you're in the chat room and you haven't backed this project you know please take a look at it you know um in fact uh Stat Zero has been putting in the link in there so you can take a look at uh, all these fine artists and writers that are working on this project to deliver this really cool action tale, uh, as tales, I should say, that mm -hmm. uh, you just don't get anymore. Uh, you feel free to buy me a bourbon. Um, <laughs> I, I will. I will drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> Guaranteed. Uh, take a look at this great Michael Golden cover. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, uh, the colors by Michael uh, Watkins. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you're wondering what this thing is about, it's a collection of knuckle busting, lip splitting, teeth spitting, action, tales of action and adventure that celebrates what has become known as toxic masculinity. These are stories for men as protect of men as protectors, warriors, adventurers and soldiers having to rise up and do the right thing. Sometimes a great personal sacrifice. 
This book is the reaction to the demonizing of masculinity in the current soy-based world. And that's the one we're living in, mm. gentlemen. <laughs> Hey, I'm toxically masculine, but that's only because of all the cigarettes and booze. <laughs> My body is literally to toxic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put a few toxins in tonight, as a matter of fact, since it's Friday. <laughs> hey, we got some limited edition shirts, um, but just like Alien Alamos, really cool designs. Uh, it'll have the Compass Comics um, uh, logo inside. Uh, these are only made for the campaign. When the orders are in, that's it. There's no extras um, unless, you know, we got a couple extra sizes, you know. Uh, where, but when I did you get the Burly Man logo? Did you make that? Or did you have somebody make that? Yeah, the, yeah, the whole the whole design uh, uh, was done by Todd Underwood over at uh, St. Clair Apparel. Um, hmm. I told him what I was looking for. Uh, I gave him some imagery and stuff like that. Because uh, at the time, I didn't have a lot of assets for uh because uh because for, for the campaign because i was still waiting on artwork to come in and yesterday was like christmas for me because you know i got a page from david i got pages from michael today i got uh, dan's page uh i got your pages awesome. um and uh, so it's like christmas for me that's why i couldn't <laughs> wait to get out here and start sharing this stuff um but uh, yeah so here's here's a close-up of the logo no dandies two <laughs> manly tales thrilling fearless bold adventures for the real man that could be a so, bourbon logo, easy. Oh yeah, two fisted yeah. manly bourbon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no <All> dandies. <laughs> <laughs> the The featured perk is uh, the brass knuckle perk, and it's actually uh, a brass knuckle trophy, which is really cool. Let me uh, pull that up here. Hey, lit devs in the house. There it is. Look at that giant size two fisted Knuckles. manly tails man of the year. This I would look it. great on any man's shelf. I think it could do more damage with a stand on that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> <themselves. laughs> yeah, they're sharp edges. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah so um, so th that's the. Uh, um, what's you know, I'm, I'm mostly it? interested in the is the man card, though. That's. Oh, yeah. Let's go down to that. I mean, oh, man card. Yes. Everybody gets that because that's a stretch goal. And we've hit that one. Yeah. Um, We've talked about uh, the team, Team Testosterone, as I like to call these gentlemen. Um, <laughs> there's Michael Golden commissions available. I have some of mine still available here. Um, nice. And here's our stretch goal. So at 25000 we unlock this cool bookmark because everybody who likes to read mm. needs a bookmark. It's got they the like the bookmarks. Yeah. I do this for my wife. She's a voracious reader, and she loves bookmarks. So I'm like, oh, okay, I got to do bookmarks Dude, I asked the crowd. I was like, enough of the bookmarks already. And they were like, no, we like them. And I'm like, yeah, okay, enough yeah. said. I'll shut my mouth. <laughs> I hope Gabe is here, with me. Here, here, here's the man card. Uh, I love this, this gimmick here. Uh, it's got a place to sign underneath. Uh, the undersigned agrees to do the right thing at all times, protect women and children, stand up and be counted, and kick ass when necessary. <laughs> nice now how, how can you can you use this in your, in your marriage at all like if you're <laughs> you don't want to do something or you just pull it out of your wallet so here you, go. you know I, sure. I i don't know uh if i have the actual balls to do that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is why uh i've been married for uh 36 years because uh, i know also when, has a man card you, you gotta know when to fight and know when to back away so yeah. you take no responsibility for anybody's uh, you, know, you know, consequences from using this. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, there's a disclaimer on the back. Way. It can be revoked. So, you know, that's the thing. Yeah. Kind of agrees to do all these things. You don't do them and you know, you can get revoked. I, I kind of get the feeling that, that I could hand that to my wife and she would grab it and rip it into a couple pieces. <laughs> yeah. I have a well, actually, card. I'm thinking of making it out of like a PVC material or a super hard card oh. so that they won't be able to do that. Oh, that's yeah, a good yeah. idea. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. If I do that, I'll have to round the corners on it so nobody stabs themselves. Or... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we're getting close. What are we at? What did we say? We're at 70, uh, 73,000. So we're did just... you do a refresh? Uh, you know, let's do that. Let's see if we got... do a quick refresh. Yeah. Right, refresh. So we're at 73075. We'll do a refresh. See if anybody has popped in. That's a negative. Okay. Ow. But so we're we're uh, slightly less than two thousand away from that seventy five thousand dollars stretch goal, which is 
the uh, vinyl logo, uh, which will be die cut uh, for, you know, you stick this in your truck, uh, on your computer, you know. I love those vinyl stickers. They're they're fantastic. Is that the ones that can you can peel them off? The, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, you can peel them off, but you can use them outside. You can use them like on the outside of your window. Uh, oh, I'll put it cool. on a bumper sticker and stuff because they're vinyl, so they you know they resist fading and and you know they won't uh, you know uh, wash away, get damaged with when they get wet. Yeah, far out. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, Here's some of the artwork. I, I need to update this. Obviously, this art came in recently, uh, so I haven't been able to update this with the color stuff. Yeah, um, you know that looks great in black and white and color. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. But but I think what Kelsey did was really like like this this panel right here. Um, it's sort of hard to to. Are we looking down at something? Mm -hmm. are these rocks and these lines here. What are these things? Um, but flashlights. Kelsey's color, you know, really brings all that stuff out you know and, and, and separates all those forms and, and i have the vision out. i could see it i know what you're <laughs> up to larry i could see it yeah i got your back <laughs> it's just it's just designed fantastically yeah. oh yeah and great black placement yep. I, I i love his black placement yeah uh, i love this too here's this a piece from andrew paquette just high adventure stuff written by uh, uh bo smith and tim rosan uh i you know when when I have the writers give me a little elevator pitch um, for their stories so that I don't have any overlap or anything's too similar and stuff like that before I give them the go ahead to, to write it. And Bo, you know, had me sold in two sentences. You know, he said, a bush pilot fighting commies. <laughs> I'm like, go. <laughs> oh, is this, is this like in Alaska where yeah. they're like coming across the, the, uh, what do they call that? That chain of islands that goes across the Aleutians. From yeah yeah oh, that's I, fun yeah this is you know, it takes place in 1957 too so oh. um this is really 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 fun fun story and then yeah, here's uh time. this is kevin grievous's story uh, roberto castro illustrated nice uh colors by uh nanjam uh, jambori and i heard that this features the his actual character from underworld is that right correct um yeah. the werewolf character that he played as an actor um oh and my creative. god why can't i remember the name of this character we we somebody in the chat it's something with like a tracks or racks or fracks oh, or I don't know. it's been ages like since that. i've seen that movie leroy <laughs> leroy <laughs> <laughs> who said that leroy the wolf yeah <laughs> uh somebody in the chat will, will straighten me out uh, I like they always it. come to my rescue when I when I have a brain <laughs> part and I can't remember names. Thank you, Maromi. It, it was Raise. Bob. I knew it had a Z in it. Oh, <laughs> Raise. Raise. Thank you, brother. Once more, Nolan's ass gets saved. <laughs> now, who's this artist here? This is, I love the eyes on that one guy in panel. Like, what is that? Two, three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Roberto Castro. Where have I seen it? Have I seen his work from? He's like, done work he... at DC. Yeah. Um, Kevin reached out to him um, uh, for this for this thing. I I I I don't know the gentleman. I'm not even sure he's in the United States. Hmm. Um, it's very cool though. But yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's. Uh, really I thought neat. it was Tom Mandrake when I first looked at it. Oh, yeah. Really? Interesting. Yeah. He's That's got good flow to it. At a, at a glance, at a glance, I was like, Tom. Man no, okay, it's not. <laughs> Like yeah. look how look how that one swing kind of goes into that other swing, right? And then swings Good. back this way. Yeah, yeah. Neat design. Yeah, yeah. Eight panels on a page too, and he makes it work. Interestingly, <laughs> you know, without doing a grid. Yeah. Always like that. Uh, here's a panel from Butch Geises. I'm starting to love my grids, though. <laughs> I love grids. I love them actually. <laughs> oh. oh, this right. looks cool, man. Yeah. Butch is a master. He is. He's so great. Uh, Nanjam did the colors. Did Butch do uh, uh, Doctor Strange? Yeah. Okay. That that's the guy. Yeah, I I like that a lot. That was a great <laughs> run. Really yeah, cool but, stuff. Uh, Butch w uh, was on the Flash with Baron when they when they made the Flash Wally Wo uh, Wally Wood. <laughs> Wally. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, what was this? Wally uh, Wally West. West. Wally West. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like a whole, I didn't see any of that stuff. That was like a whole 
time period. I don't know if I was paying attention. Yeah, it was early '90s. I think is when they re uh, or late '80s when they were barely born, Kelsey. No, no, I was completely zoned into like whatever was happening with the Image Comics thing. I was like locked in. And, I didn't see yeah. anything happening around that until like you know started spreading out. <laughs> I was X Men, X Force, you know, Punisher. I was like Flash, Man, Manly Comics. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what do you what do you guys got planned for uh, tonight? It's Friday night. You guys got anything going on? Work, work. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You too, Dan. Yep. Dave, you working? I got a double page spread that I'm hiding under here that I can't show. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> well, you know, my my, will... my uh, palate's starting to fill up a little bit with uh with work, I, I, so I'm kind of excited about that. Excellent. Awesome, because you know I'm I'm just in advertising mostly here. I'm, I'm freelance, but I've been just I just do you know storyboards and things like that. And so, starting to look to do some more comic book stuff. So Ooh. I do like this one character that yeah. I've been working on. Um, uh, this called Kent Menace, and oh, uh, like it's got a cool look and it's a lot, a lot of fun. So Ooh, enjoying fun. that. Can you good deal? Excellent. Share anything? Uh. I do not do all the sharing thing yet. <laughs> like, mm. I'm not tech savvy yet. Okay. But it's on my, it's on my, uh, actually, can you, can you, can one of you guys go to my Instagram? Yeah, I'll do it right now. Instagram has everything. That's kind of what I'm using as my portfolio. Okay. Rob Fellows says, hail Graham Nolan and you talented gents. Alien Alamo arrived today. So I'm wearing my compass comics beanie to celebrate many things. All right, Rob. Thank you. Yeah, look at that. I just noticed in your avatar, you got the beanie on. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, there's a few Dan Lawless, apparently. What, what's your Instagram name? Uh, uh, just I think it's just Dan Lawless. Oh, it is. Uh, look for, um, uh, uh, let's see, the Conan, Here's... I think. The Conan head. Yeah, the, I think it's the Conan. Here we go. Oh, you got DeviantArt, too. Can I contact you through there, Dan? Uh, yeah. Twitter, uh, it's fine too. Um, I'm not on Twitter. Oh, not on Twitter. <laughs> well, you know yeah, what? Instagram's Dave, fine. Dave, Dan's um, Dan's email was in that email I sent to all you guys. Oh, okay, that's right. All right, all right, all right. Cool. Because I'll yeah, send you the Truth, that? Justice, American Way logo. Yeah, yeah. Send me the a PNG file so I could just drop it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, since all you guys are working tonight, I'm gonna. I guess it's up to me to do the drinking for you. So, um, what? Why can't you do both? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want to work. I don't Multitask. Work Come on. I've been busting my ass uh, on the promotional <laughs> uh, thing uh, and uh, formatting and all this other stuff. So, uh, tonight... all at once. I think you could do all at once. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Coming Graham, why don't you do a digital, seamless digital art online? What's that? Oh, you mean like do Why a don't you do connect it the, like a speed computer? drawing thing where people could just see it come together? Yeah, you know, I've see done the magic that. happen. Dan, yeah, are you I've sure that you have an Instagram? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I see, I see DeviantArt, Facebook, Artnet, uh, blowout forums. I see like everything but Instagram here for some reason. Why is that not coming up? Dan, well, Dan you know what? It's, it's Dan Lawless art. Well, I did artist Dan yeah. Lawless, but I'll try, do Dan, Lawless, Dan Lawless art. art. Uh, okay. uh, here's some bullet wants to know if I'm going to have uh, Kevin Grievous on again. Uh, yeah, I, I, I want to do a show and, and bring the writers back in uh, to talk about uh, phase two with the, the second uh, round of, uh, of stories. So, yeah, definitely want to have. Uh, uh, have Kevin and Bo and Chuck and, and Baron back on. So Kevin's going to be gone for about like five or six weeks because he's uh, filming a movie. <clears throat> oh, oh, really? Yeah, nice. <clears throat> yeah. And he's oh. he's filming it with that guy, uh, that Frank Gorillo guy or whatever. Is, oh, yeah. His name? Frank yeah. Gorillo, yeah. <sighs> so, yeah. I finally just yeah. went to Instagram. Okay, I found it. <laughs> Is that okay? Let me share it. All right. What were we looking for? I already forgot. Uh, Kent Menace. <laughs> Kent Menace. Okay. What was it? 
in here somewhere? Look at all this. This is awesome. See is that, that one there? The guy with the little. Uh, By the way, the here. this right here. Yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah, love it. Not even it's not even a comic book. There's going to be just a prose with it, a prose story, and and the idea is this guy goes through time and fights sea monsters. So this is a, he's in the 70s in a pharmacy. So I put all these things like <laughs> VO5 hair stuff. The, yeah. I, went, I went back and found a bunch of products for that were all that era. Is that shelves? Is this color? This color looks almost like it, like illegal. Have you had success with that blue? Oh, I, that won't print. That one. Okay, print. and the screen. You know, that, okay, th this is this is RGB. You know, I thought it, you were it, whipping it, some magic on me, man. I was gonna be like, nah. oh, what? All of a sudden, tells you, how do I do that? Yeah, <laughs> I love all the multicolors you're doing in the uh, in the hand here. That's that's the Bernie Wrightson thing, man. And I the, love that stuff. Bernie Wrightson stuff. You know, yeah, so good. yeah. I mean, I love those guys. And the the greens there. and the blues. And oh, the I love it. Home. All the variations so in that. So good. Yeah, look yeah. at the detail. You got Tylenol. <laughs> you got the signs backwards. Alberto yeah, that's what's great about the computer now. You can just go, you know, do to go to Google and pull those images up and just plop them in. You know. Yeah. <laughs> now, Dan, you said you do this in Photoshop, but do you do it? Do you, are you using a Photoshop app on your uh, on your iPad? I have a big Wacom tablet. You know. Oh, so Wacom. Okay. Okay. Display. You know what's interesting though is I, I even though I have a display tablet. When I, I draw it that way, because it feels like natural drawing, you know, drawing directly on it. But when I color, I mirror the screens and I'm looking at the like like I, I did before with my other Wacom tablet didn't have the digital display. I'm looking at the screen and coloring because I can see it better. And and it, it, I don't know, it's just it's a better display. The big, you know, the big display, mm. the, the mm. iMac display. But my hand also doesn't get in the way. It's weird. Like I got used to my hand not being in the way of the drawing. It's strange, but. Hey, yeah. you've been busy, man. Look at all this. Yeah. This so there's is great. Some, there's some I John love this. There's, a, there's that, uh, the monster. I did a quick thing for his, uh, the blue one there. Oh, yeah. For, uh, was it? I just did that for fun. Yeah. That for was his, uh, book called his, Graveyard his Shift. His, uh, Graveyard Shift. Yeah. Right. Universal yeah, he's a X Men. Those look he, like some fun characters to draw. I wouldn't he, mind drawing those. He looks tough, but he's a cuck. <laughs> Uh, he's a cock or a cook he is a cock his <laughs> wife is going with the vampire guy so like you know there's, he's there's a, a cyber frog it's terrible oh yeah i haven't seen this this is great <clears throat> that character is <laughs> tough to draw that this is he's this is a result hard. of a couple of time a couple of attempts yeah that really bombed it's a it's not an easy character to get right it's mm -hmm. very very difficult it just i've drawn him a couple of times and it's like nah, that is not it and finally this one's the closest thing i think it's pretty solid but I that actually did a, a whole work. like anatomy study on him just in case you know I, I get asked to draw him again or it's whatever. A weird, yeah. It's a weird. He doesn't move like a per, you know like a person. And, and Ethan you know has mm. a way of drawing those things that. And, oh here, I'll show you something. Here, and all the little details, you know, it's like oh my lord. Here, I, this is probably uh, I know that. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and vamp. Let me grab this real quick. <laughs> uh, Wait, where is it? Oh, here it is. Okay, I got it. I got it. Uh, something I was working on for Phil. Uh, share file. Wait, is this is this top secret? Because I know a little bit about something. I don't know, but you know, for anybody that's here right now, they can check it out. Um, oh, I gotta actually open it. Okay. StreamYards is not very streamlined. Well, while you're doing that, I will show you my cyber frog. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, let's check it out. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. It, I remember. It was an alien animal. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I remember awesome. seeing this. <laughs> yeah, that was, that, that's a hard character to draw. Is that for a trading card? No, or? that was uh, the mini print that came with um, that everybody that ordered Alien Alamo got. I don't know how he oh. would pick a character that's that detailed to draw that. Yeah, from it's panel just, to panel to panel. But that's just him. It? All this stuff is so detailed, though. That's I know. It's yeah. Like, um, why is this not coming up? Oh, here. Okay, here it is. All right, finally, finally. All right, I'll share mine. Um, of course, mo it's mostly uh, 
Heather. So <laughs> yeah, actually, I saw that. Yeah, he's got oh, a little. Sweet. But uh, Phil gave me some ideas to make him. Uh, he's gonna be holding like a chicken wing, uh, you know, because he likes chicken and have like a bucket mm -hmm. of chicken in here. She's got her choker on, but I got to put like there. She has like an onk on or something like that. Oh, okay. Is this so. for the uh, the swimsuit thing? Yeah, I'm gonna do it double pager where it's that's that old school the sideways one that everybody hates. <laughs> you uh, know, when, they, when you turn the book sideways, doesn't everybody right? hate that? Yeah. I love eliciting emotional responses in the reader. So yeah, I'm gonna turn it <laughs> sideways. I'm trying to get Art to ink it. I want him to ink it. Yeah, cool. Graham, I think that's not supposed to be talked about. <laughs> what? Just... I did one, but I don't know how to share. I get it. That... <laughs> oh, what? That showing that off? Yeah, yeah, I think that's top secret stuff, kid. Oh well, should have told yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, it's out now. I'm doing a Chinoo one. <laughs> oh yeah, for the yeah. the swimsuit. Yeah, yeah, get it out of here. Look, Zay, Look, just Phil's on there laughing for. right now. So he's. Yeah. Not... <laughs> it's early advertising. That's right. Z <laughs> get get Phil, people talking known better, about man. it, Phil, and then then they'll, mm -hmm. they'll sign up and they'll buy, buy the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you start sharing stuff like Kelsey's. Uh, beautiful layout there yeah i want to i want to draw everything on online like i'm i'm actually going to do all of nora saga number six uh which i'm about to start pretty soon uh after i finish uh the nexus i got like mm -hmm. a little bit uh not much more left on nexus but i want to get him enough to where he can get the campaign going the cover and all that and right yeah does he have a start date for that uh, just whenever I can get oh, enough to oh, for him, as, as, uh, I, I got, I'm gonna get right back to it and get him a cover. And I'm about halfway done, the first 11 pages are almost done. So, um, after that, you know, smooth sailing downwards, get it all done. Um, so yeah, it's no sweat. I'm having oh. a ball right now, I'm, I'm kind of itching to go draw right now. So, are we? Right. <laughs> I made this oh. dip out of here. You know what? We've been on an hour, almost an, almost two hours now. So uh, I'm gonna uh, we'll close her down here. We'll let, get you guys go back to work, so I can go upstairs and start drinking for you. And uh, I want to thank <laughs> thank everybody in, uh, that came into the chat tonight, uh, this afternoon to check out all this amazing artwork. And uh, you know, yeah, back thanks, in you know Olmo, and um, uh, and we will see you uh, next time when we have more stuff to share. Right. Mm -hmm. So everybody, you have a great weekend. And we'll catch you, you guys. Bye -bye. Take it easy, everybody.